Hello, this is Amy Reader, and I'm showing you the process I did to uh, make one of my Rocket Girl covers. This is for Rocket Girl Cover 7. Um, so this is the end product of it, but I'm going to go uh, talk about the genesis of it, and drawing it, and coloring it, and what brought me to this, this end image. So, um, first of all, I knew really that I wanted to do some sort of, uh, you know, stoop image where they're all sitting on a stoop, but I had a really hard time just trying to figure it out. I had a hard time wrapping my head around the concept, so I um, I actually had to do myself a favor and take some photo reference. I had a um, friend take pictures of me so that I could figure out how to draw this stuff because it was just hard to figure out the scale of the doors and the stairs and the railing and everything like that. And also just, I felt like having images would help me kind of picture things. So none of this is actually um, a reference for a specific pose. It's just sort of me getting used to seeing it in a 3D world. Um, because I took a, I, I drew a lot of sketches and it took me a while to get to this image. Um, it was just, uh, for some reason, just really hard for me to visualize. But this was the official sketch that I came up with. It, it measures about, um, I would say like, four inches by three inches or something like that um, and uh, and yeah the idea the concept being that Dai Young who's the main character she's Rocket Girl she's in her civilian clothes for the first time on a cover and um, and so she's kind of like hanging out on this kind of caged like railing and they're all behind it so it's sort of like she's got them caught but then they don't seem to mind so much and it doesn't seem like she's really in so much control. Um, so anyway, um, what I do when I draw is I take this big thumbnail and I, or it's small, right? And I, I scan it in, blow it up, um, print it back out again to the size that I want to draw it at. And I um, light box over it. Um, so, so I definitely like use the same poses and all that stuff at this point because I feel like if I redraw anything, it's never as good. So I just go off of the original drawing, even if it's tiny. So anyway, what I do underneath all this, of course, is that underdrawing, which you can't see because I have the light box turned off. Um, but what's really nice about that is it means I don't really have to plan the backgrounds anymore. I already have that figured out in this um, part up here. So I can just sort of draw <clears throat> draw things from the foreground into the background. So right now I draw her first because she's in the front and I draw the gate and I've drawn part of Annie that overlaps the gate but haven't drawn the rest of her yet. Um, and what I really like about that process is A, it's not messy because I have a really tough time dealing with uh, pencil smudge. I just really don't like that. Um, and uh, B, it's really nice because there's all these like interacting things going on between the bars and somebody's body and all this stuff. And all these interacting lines can really compete with each other if you're penciling it all at once and then inking it all at once. It's just too much to wrap your head around. Over here, I can just sort of like do a little piece at a time and it's not gonna be so much rocket sciences. It would be for me to do it all at once. So it's really nice that I get to ink myself because of that. So then I draw her body, um, Annie's body, and I add um, writer in the background, and as you can see, a um, boom box right there, and a, a, a floating hand. <laughs> because again, it's less about drawing individual objects and more about having drawing the thing that's in the foreground and then drawing the thing that's in the background. Um, and then the rest of the characters. And after that, I um, started working on the stairs and worked on the railing on the sides. And um, I actually, it's kind of sad, but it's true that this is technically an incorrect drawing. Um, I mean, everything's incorrect if you probably look at it too long, but um, the perspective, I really wanted to make it super square because I tend to do too many extreme perspectives. So I wanted something that was super square, but I was too afraid to really do that with, um, these sides here, but I actually, it turned out that I should have made it more square because um, now if you look at how big they are compared to this step here, 
and how big these guys are compared to this step here, it's like these guys are kind of ginormous technically. But I think it, I, I think that people don't really notice it, so um, luckily I hopefully got away with it. Anyway, then I uh, drew the back here, um, you know, finalized everything um, with the background. And then I take this piece and I uh, make, you know, just some tiny corrections and stuff, not too much, but then I scan, you know, I scan it in and this is the digital image of the inks. Um, so this, from now on, this is all digital. So the next step of the process is to flat it. And um, that's just flat colors. Um, I usually have a color flatter. His name is Chris Conabano. This time he was moving, so I decided to flat this myself. So these are all just colors I chose. Usually there's an extra step where I'll um, change up the colors to what I want once I get it from him. Um, and let's see here. So then I, I have all these different things that I was saving for the covers, or sorry, the colors. Like uh, most people, they have to, um, they, they have to kind of do everything, render it in line if they have a colorist and stuff. But since I color myself, I can leave all of that for later. So all of their shirts and everything had different patterns and I could mess with textures and stuff. So I add all of that here. I add like some letter, like some stuff on the newspaper, some stripes on his socks, the Les Mis shirt, this 80s pattern right here. Um, and also created this texture on her pants that kind of made it look like jeggings, like a washed out jeggings look. So, um, and then I start rendering. And the first thing I decided to render was Dai Young because I felt like um, she's the thing that's gonna pop. And I knew that I wanted the lighting to make a shadow on her stomach. I wanted the sun to be up high because it was supposed to be super hot outside and stuff. So um, I established that first to kind of give myself a frame of reference to figure it out. So first I, you know, uh, put some shading on there and um, and then I go in here and shade the background before I shade the, the characters and the reason why is that way again I'm figuring out what the light source is before I'm jumping in and doing details so um, at this point it's really only a shading layer and I apply the shading layer to everything I do everything has a shading layer on it it's not the only way that I render but it's one of the ways and it's just basically like a really dark blue um, that I draw over things, but it's set to multiply so that it kind of shines through the colors and stuff and um, set at like 45% opacity or something. Um, so yeah, I figure out that I want trees, I want this guy to be in the shade and all this stuff. So um, next I shade the people in the same way with the shading layer. So, so far it's really flat looking even though, you know, there's shading and everything, it looks kind of like an animation because it's just super flat shading. Um, so I do more than just that. Um, as you can see here, now I've taken their bodies and their hair and their faces and all that stuff and I've rendered it so that I kind of bring out some highlights. I add some pinks on them and stuff like that. So this is kind of the difference, see? So it's flat hair and then I add a little bit more using mostly the dodge tool which is kind of an art of its own. It's You don't want to do too much. So um, it's kind of not the easiest tool to master, but it's really helpful. Um, then I, from here to here, what I did was I, I took a bunch of the background stuff and what I do a lot with the backgrounds is I use gradients. And gradients really help group things together. Like for instance, we've got this whole section here that are all different colors, but because of the gradient, I can kind of um, make it, you know, use that same color of blue that I use for shading and I, I use a gradient that'll be darker down here and get lighter up here and it ends up kind of grouping them together um, so that they kind of, it, your mind can organize it a little bit better. Um, and it also really helps just create depth, like down here where the steps are and stuff, they're coming towards us so to make them kind of look more foreshortened, sorry wrong way, to make them look more foreshortened I can make just tiny little gradients that will make them pop a little bit more. And of course it just makes, in general, the characters pop in order for me to do that, or if I do that. Um, really important to this cover was adding texture. 
So that's what I did here and that actually took a lot of time. I have different little textury brushes and everybody's got their different kinds. I'm still kind of figuring mine out. Um, but then I also used this uh, program called Painter um, and they have uh, watercolor brushes but this is like an old version of Painter so um, it doesn't even really have the same effects. I tried to use a new version and I didn't like it so much. So all of like the drippy texture that you see here that's kind of like striated that is all um, based off of these watercolors that kind of like drip on the page. Um, I felt like that would go really well with the grunge of 80s New York. Um, and that really changed it a lot, I think, if you look at the difference between these two. Um, like, yeah, one is one looks really flat and everything, and then the other one just really looks a lot more real. Um, after that, I do a bunch of just extra things, right? Like um, I colored this and this and the gum and just a bunch of like the little extra objects. So this is more like finishing touches and stuff. And then as you can see, I also added a little bit of gradient to people so that they would be knocked back. This way it makes Dayoung stick out and it also kind of puts them each in their own plane. So like, so if you check out um, Annie's legs there, like they're lighter right here and I knock them back a bit. I knocked back her, I knocked back his legs and um, and Jean is a bit darker but I lightened his hair so that it would pop. Um, and then I just do a little bit more finishing touches right here. Um, oh, I should also mention though in the previous step that another one of the fi finishing touches I did was add highlights. So like little parts up here and everything. There's just little bitty highlights that I brought out um, with kind of a white pencil -y effect. And yeah, and then all I do besides that is I added this layer um, on top of everything that's set to color. You know, sometimes it, you know you can set things to normal or multiply. Well, this is set to color. And what that does is uh, you can paint a color over anything and it will turn it into that color. Um, like if you put red on top of this, it if I did like a solid red, he, uh, this guy's face would be completely red but at differing values like the values would stay the same so you'd still see the image it would just be one color um, or one main color so what I did here was I kind of used a really soft brush and just lightly brushed on these colors on this layer so I put some blue over here and some red over here and a little yellow over here and a little purple over here and um, part of why I do that is because it's it kind of knocks everything back I mean, there's just so many colors that I had with this image that um, it sometimes it kind of makes things too disorganized. So a lot of what I do is just try to group things together. And it has the effect of making them feel like they're more in the background and they're not in focus. While Dayoung, who's looking straight at us, is totally in the focus because she's not having all of these color effects put on her. Um, I also added a little bit of... Um, graffiti and it's actually Dayoung's name in Korean so it's a nice little nod for people and then finally I just add the logo and that's when I'm actually just done so anyway I hope this gave you guys some uh, perspective on how it is that I do this stuff and you know it takes time but I have a process one of the best things to do when you're making art is just making up rules they can be any rules you want but just make them up because that way you're not just staring at a screen and not knowing what to do next and not knowing when something is actually going to be done. So what I've done is I started out with these really flat shadings and stuff that I used to do and then slowly I've learned different things about colors that I add on but starting with something that simple is really a good way to go with colors. So these are just like little tidbits on ways that it's helped me create. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye.